Uh, the San Diego Padres and Los Angeles Dodgers played a kind of outrageous baseball game yesterday. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like we we sort of have to start there. Uh, there was all kinds of chippiness. The The final score was very lopsided. The Dodgers wind up losing this game to the Padres 10 to 2. Uh, but Dodgers fans uh, really, uh, really showed out in this one, huh, Damon? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's classic Dodgers fans in in peak form, really. I mean, it was it was it's pretty impressive uh, what they're able to do, and and just the just classy individuals as always. Uh, nothing but class over at Dodger Stadium, and uh, just super likable, super likable team. I I mean, I agree with you. I just think you know they the fans just like the team. They they took this regular season and they've built up to playoff format and they're in playoff yeah. form yeah you know? form. um it, not giving them an excuse i will say that uh you know tatis can rub you the wrong way doing some stuff um what he was doing was kind of crazy you know it was <laughs> but we were talking pregame. i have had my fair share of experiences in la dealing with dodger fans uh up close and personal in the bullpen via social media and uh <laughs> there's there's some special places for him we'll say that but yeah i mean it's it's uh, i i said before is anyone surprised you know um i just it's it's kind of something that i expect every time i go to la and especially recently with what the dodgers and padres have turned into i think it's just another one for the books did you see what happened in that bullpen the throwing like yeah. throwing? oh yeah that was did anything like that ever happen do you have any stories from from being out in the bullpen there uh and of course you know let's put a explicit uh, for sure <laughs> filter you know, on it. Um, i think it's what's great about sports right like one thing like that i've noticed since not playing or even being around more is like what the nets have kind of done like the mm-hmm. access it it limits um and then also like I don't know. I feel like any other sport, maybe basketball or courtside, but like we're the bullpen is away from everyone, surrounded yeah. by by opposing fans. Um, it's kind of unique in that way. And so, yeah, we talked yeah. about it last week. Um, you know, how do you deal with people chirping at you? How do you deal with Instagram messages, Twitter DMs? Dodger Stadium will prepare you for that. You will hear <laughs> anything and everything um, that you could ever imagine from death threats, family stuff. And again, there's sometimes we're like, how could you say that about my mom? You know what I mean? My mom's a great lady like, <laughs> or, or anything. You know, I, I've, I've heard um, when our left fielder, you know, I've, I've just heard some stuff that you're just like, dude, what in the world? Where it just becomes, you become numb to it. You become like, or again, uh, some of my problem is I'm going to talk back. You, you say something that's, again, we talked about a past baseball related. I'm not saying that we have the right to go into the stands, but be prepared to hear something back. Um, just like you, I know we're getting paid a lot of money. It's part of the experience. Talk about baseball. You know, tell me again, blowing a game, Matt Kemp's my dad. You want to even take it a little bit further from stuff. I'm cool with that, but you get to the point where you start throwing stuff. And again, I don't think people truly understand the magnitude of safety and there's 60,000 people in Dodger Stadium Yeah, compared to, I mean, we saw it last night, what, like 15 security guards? I mean, really? You know what I mean? They were and seriously outnumbered. <laughs> again, it's just... Uh, and just sitting there, too. Yeah. Like, the, a lot of, I don't know if you saw the one in, near the Profar situation, oh, yeah. but he just, like, watched the guy, like, throw the baseball at him and was just like, hey, man, don't do that. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Again, a little inside info. 2017, when we went to L.A. for the NLDS... We were told to tell our family members and friends that were coming to the game to be very careful about wearing Diamondback stuff, it, even though they were really? in the family section and they were going to have people around them, but be very careful about wearing and promoting stuff. So it's a great story. I talked to my mom and my mom's like, oh, can you give me two extra tickets? I met two Dodgers fans at this taco place eight down the road and they're your fans now. They want to come sit with us. So I was like, mom, I love you, but I can't leave two Dodgers fans family tickets. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's just not going to work. But yeah, we were, we were advised to not even like in a way have our family wear Diamondback stuff at the games because of wow. what could possibly happen. I went to Dodgers game earlier this year in July. We're going to talk about that game a little bit later, actually. And uh, me and my my buddies, we all wore D-back stuff, but we were pretty tame. Uh, but there was like a guy like three sections ahead of us uh, that was a D-backs fan that was just so loud and obnoxious all night long. Christian Walker had a great game and the D-backs won. And I was really genuinely concerned for that guy's safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, things got to a, to a level 
yesterday where this game had to be stopped. Yeah. Right? This mm-hmm. game basically was at a standstill for about 10 minutes. Uh, there was all kinds of craziness happening in left field around Europe's and Profar. There was a fan that, yeah, threw a baseball basically yeah. right at him. Missed him, fortunately, but didn't miss him by much. Uh, there were there was debris of various types being thrown on the field and right field around where Tatis was. There was uh, stuff being thrown in the bullpen area as well. Uh, and it got to a point where, yeah, I mean, obviously, D-backs fans, like there's sort of a sense around here that Dodgers fans are, the, are basically the worst <laughs> people on earth as far as many of us are concerned, right? Uh, but I think in a, on a larger scale, like for all the world to see, it was kind of the the worst side of that fan base yeah. kind of being on display in a very real way, right? Like you Darvish was just sort of sitting there on the mound for about 10 minutes waiting for this game to continue. And Archie for, for a pitcher, like that's a hard thing, right? <laughs> to just sort of hard. sit there after you've gotten warmed up for an inning and just wait for that inning just to actually start. A hundred percent. And on a bigger scale, we were just talking about it. Like what if that ball hits pro far in the head? Yeah. I mean, you know, like outside of his safety, that has so many bigger implications to, again, what we know as baseball. And again, I was just talking about the access and what makes baseball great. Like this was an incident that baseball is going to review and talk about, like in the, in the union meetings, this off season, the player meetings, they're going to discuss what happened here and how do we address that? Well, we put nets up. We don't allow fans to be able to touch us. We put nets right. You know what I mean? And, Real quickly, something like this turns into a separation where, you know, again, we're talking about it from not only safety, but yeah, from a a safety of Darvish, like having to wait 10 minutes, not only what that means for his health, but then like you said, mentally being able to lock back in and make pitches that are important. I mean, the Padres very rightfully so blew them out last night, but they have a chance to win this series and move on. Totally. And an inning like that, I mean, who knows what could have happened? You know what I mean? Yeah. There there was also some uh, some chipping among the players as well. Yep. Uh, Jack Flaherty was was kind of getting into it with Manny Machado after he struck him out. Uh, seemed to be getting into it with some other guys as well from from the dugout. Uh, apparently, Manny Machado, I, I guess at the end of an inning, threw a baseball into the Dodgers dugout, which was sort of frowned upon. Dodgers players were not too happy about that. <laughs> um, Manny says he does that kind of thing all the time. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly what the, what the deal is there. Uh, the other storyline here is the jerks and Profar robbed a Mookie Betts home run in the first inning of this game. And, uh, he, he pulled off a pretty Good. outrageous, pulled everyone. yeah, he pulled off a pretty outrageous troll job and made it look like he had not caught the ball, I guess, until he eventually revealed that he had when Mookie Betts was like already almost done with his home run trot. <laughs> Mookie got around uh, second. You could see he was turning like, oh. Oh man! And they gra- the, the broadcast put the graphic up. Yeah, oh, yeah. the broadcast absolutely put the graphic up because it was like, well, we if if Jerks and Profar hasn't revealed the baseball yet, then of course the ball is is in the stand somewhere. Um, but yeah, Profar, uh, it it was it was pretty it was pretty funny to watch. Uh, I don't know how do you guys sort of make sense of of all this? Who's who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Is this just sort of? Archie, is this just sort of baseball it is. players it's just doing baseball, baseball player things? Man, end of the season. Um, I think all the times, like in these situations, like you're competing. We talked about it last night, what it means to make the playoffs, what it means to compete for a championship. And both these teams have a legitimate chance to win a World Series. Yeah. And so I just think that's part of competitiveness, man. You say and do things sometimes where I'm sure Jack may look back at this tomorrow, maybe not, and be like, man, what the hell was I saying? Yeah. Or just, you know, back it up. Like, I stand by it. But either way, uh, some of it I just love because that's what I love about grown men playing a game. And it brings out this edge and this fire and um, this side of people or things. And sometimes it's nasty. Some, but that's also what makes it great. You know, Manny has his own past and he's not the most likable guy. I love Manny Machado. I love his swag, but he comes with his own bag of controversy as well. Yeah. Yes, um, so. You know, I know Manny may say he does that, but I'd say Manny knows what he's doing. He played over there. Um, and, you know, I think some of it at the same time, I think Manny has evolved into one of the, the leaders and ambassadors for this game. I don't really think he gets yeah. enough credit for the consistency he's had over his career and the caliber of player he's been. And from what I've heard and seen, the leader he's become over there in San Diego. Yeah, I mean, he called a team meeting after yes. some of this stuff went down. You could see it in the dugout. He was he was trying to tell his guys to to stay focused and and I guess not not let the moment get too big. Yeah, I just I I also you know have heard from other guys the way he's 
um, handled Tatis. I say handled Tatis, helped Tatis, <laughs> um, and just helped and kind of been a pillar um, of leadership for a team that kind of was lacking that over the years with what they were trying to do. And, um, yeah, I think because of Manny Machado alone, I really like the Padres. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I hate, you know, rooting <laughs> for the Padres because of them being in our division yes. and I find their, their fans and, and kind of what's gone on with their fan base recently kind of annoying yes. uh, because, you know, they made that switch to Brown. I think it became kind of a fashion statement. And then, uh, you know, the Padres got a lot of really good players yeah. and all of a sudden the influx of Padres fans, especially here in Arizona, just skyrocketed, yeah. which is pretty upsetting to me. But that being said, like if you're against the Dodgers, you're my you're my friend. <laughs> the enemy of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, and uh, so I'm I'm going to be rooting pretty hard for the for the Padres in this series. I have been and and the Dodgers, just everything they do is just the most unlikable thing i've ever like the jack flaherty situation i understand it's baseball emotions are high it's the playoffs people are revved up and jack flaherty's a little bit of a fiery personality yeah, type of for guy sure. yeah he but he, he gave up four runs in in and has a six seven five yeah. era in the playoffs right now and he was like acting like he was throwing like a complete game shutout again when he was screaming at manny machado there i didn't really understand that i just i find the dodgers so unlikable and uh <laughs> Uh, another thing I need to bring up is that the Otani bat at bat thing like the Otani's up in four batters. Uh, oh, it yeah, makes me yeah. so sick. I <laughs> I can't deal with that anymore. Every time I see that, I just it just in, I'm incensed. So well, I, I mean, I'm watching the Cardinals Niners game. and yes. Otani pops up in the middle of the field and I'm just like, I get it, dude. But <laughs> come on now. I know that like so everyone always talks about baseball doesn't promote their stars well enough. I and I completely agree and I think that what we're seeing is them trying to completely flip that narrative, which is fine, but the way that they're doing it with one specific guy is just so infuriating as a fan of that of a rival fan base. Not from only that, that team. can we talk about game 1 in the interview in the ninth inning um of the there's a interview of Padres um uh, Gosh, dang it. I'm going blank. But recently, MLB Baseball did an interview in the middle of the ninth inning and didn't show in a bat in the top of the ninth. Uh, and it was like, yeah, the in-game interviews for me during baseball, especially playoffs in September. Nah, man, I'm yeah. off that. Yeah, I'm, I'm off that. I'm with you. I feel like I'd see exclusively bad feedback from fans on social media about that. I don't I don't think I've seen a single person who actually likes them doing that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I well, will say this, though. I, I kind of. I get what you're saying, the influx of Padres fans, but I like Padres fans because they're they're just happy to be good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think they're as evil or mean when they lose as Dodgers fans. No, no, no. They're nowhere near the level of Dodgers fans. I, I think uh, it's what's bothersome for me is it, it, in particular is I hate when fans of this in people that are from this state yes. oh, that yeah. have like lived in this state their whole red? lives <laughs> and, they're, and they're the biggest Dodgers Padres fans yeah. in the world. And you're sitting there and you're like, how did that happen? You, I also like San Diego. Yeah. I also enjoy Great going place. to San cool Diego. Beach, it's my favorite weather. city to go, to go visit, but that doesn't, I love Petco park. Yep. I think their yeah, colors are really cool. I'm also not a Padres fan because of it, because I'm from Arizona and have lived here my whole life. So that's what really infuriates me For about sure. it. And there's been a huge influx of Padres fans recently in that regard. Dodgers fans, that's been a thing. Of course. They've the Dodgers have moved to LA. Yeah. But Padres fans, it's like it's been kind of a recent phenomenon, I think. We all city like the mayor. 